Welcome to a psychiatrist's take on the Bible. This podcast does not provide psychiatric, medical, or professional advice, opinion, treatment, or counseling. It contains general information for educational purposes only and is not a substitute for psychiatric, medical, or professional care. It does offer a unique, so what, take on the Bible of a board-certified psychiatrist who is also an ordained minister. One of my favorite hymns of all time is Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Life. And what it's really saying is that we need to ask God to help us see the way He sees, to care for what He cares for. But that's difficult. One of the hardest things I find in this world is for people to see each other. Not the surface, not the prejudiced predispositions that cause us to react to people in ways that do not fit who they actually are, but to actually see. If you turn with me to John 14, verse 8, Philip had been living with the Lord for some time when he says, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Hmm. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am the Father? I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The problem was that Philip was coming to that whole situation with predetermined ideas of what a human being was like. It never occurred to him that he could watch Jesus and see the Father. So there was no connection. He had eyes to see, but could not see. And how well do we do at seeing the people around us? That Jesus, for example, said... You know, and when uh, Jesus knew what the disciples were arguing about, he said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Perceive ye not, don't you see? Neither understand. Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not? And having ears, hear ye not? And do not remember. That was a problem. <laughs> you look toward out the scriptures and you think, well, just how crazy can people be? They're saying, we should put him on the cross because he claims to be God. And if he keeps bringing people back from the dead, someone might believe he is. <laughs> Rather than saying, wow, the only one that could bring anyone back from the dead has to be God. They were ascribing it to the devil or anything else. They did not want to see. And here the disciples were seeing and not thinking through. And it says here it's because their hearts were hardened. If we want to see, we need to say, Lord, help me to have a soft heart toward other people. Help me to notice what they are and aren't doing and how they're feeling, and what might have gotten them there. In Mark 6 we read, And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. He saw that they were wandering around lost because they had no shepherd. He saw that. He didn't judge them. He didn't get mad at them for being lost and wandering around the place. No, he reached out to them and met their need. 
He wants to give you and me those same eyes. But it's such a rare thing. I find about the only time somebody, when I come and they see me, gets all excited to see me and is just glad that it is I, is when I come home and my dog runs to meet me. Seems like everybody else has an expectation. I suppose even my dog's hoping I'll give her some food or play with her. But her whole body wiggles. She doesn't care what I look like or whether I've combed my hair. She just sees, oh, I know this guy and I like him. We need to do that more for each other. You know, when God looks at you and when he looks at me, he says, I know this guy and I like them. Even when you've messed up, even when things aren't going well, he says, I know you, and I like you. One of my favorite books is Hind's Feet on High Places. And in there, uh, the young lady is being taken on a journey to the high places. And she decides to take a shortcut, and it's not a good idea, getting off the path the shepherd had put her on. She gets all muddy and bruised and wastes a lot of time, finally gets back to the path at the point she left it. And there is the shepherd waiting. And she's ready for him to yell at her, put her down, be upset. But instead, he loves on her. He sees her, sees her future perfect. Remember, the Lord is in your future. He has no concern about whether you make it and whether he finishes the job of perfecting you, that he might present you to himself a bride having no spot, no wrinkle, and no blemish. He sees that now. We need to see that in other people, too, what he is trying to do in and through them. Jesus went up into a mountain one day, and seeing the multitude, he sat down and taught them. Jesus looked around at the world around him and saw the harvest, how truly it was plenteous. I get tired of acceptance always being tinged with judgment, control, expectations, past history. Even at church one wonders if the acceptance is because they're supposed to accept you or because you fill a pew and help the place operate. Are they actually glad to see you? They would all swear that their greetings are genuine. So why doesn't it translate into attempts to interact at other times? There's that obligatory handshaking session. I used to get together with a group of Southern Baptist ministers for a prayer breakfast in Anchorage, Alaska. The men would come in and do the ritual of going around the circle and shaking hands. The thing that drove me crazy is that they would shake my hand while looking at the next person then shake his hand while working, looking at the third. They were never in the moment. They were never seeing you. I mean, you could have been miserable and depressed and they wouldn't pick up on it. And it's, we need to ask the Lord to help us see the needs of those around us, see what he's doing in their lives, see who he has prepared and what he's up to, rather than go out and just sort of do our ritual and and say, wouldn't you like to come to my church or something? As a child, I got straight A's and never caused a lick of trouble. And I was invisible, <laughs> even to this day. If somebody passes me in the hall and looks right through me, and this happens even at church, especially if they're young people. Man, if you're 68 like I am, they look at you like, They don't look at you, and it's quite uncomfortable. Maybe one of the greatest gifts you can give your brethren is to ask the Lord to let you see them as he sees them, for he is their great lover. He's always enthusiastic about interrelating with them. He never says when you go to him for wisdom, why'd you take so long, where have you been? No, he just gives, shaken down, heaped up, and running over. So pray this prayer with me. Lord, help me to be happy to see each individual, to look them in the eye, genuinely seek after their welfare and see their needs, their accomplishments, why you've put them in my life. Practice the mindfulness of human beings. Who is there in front of you? 
not just mindful about the things around you, about the weather and the birds, but mostly about the people who is near you and delight in their presence and their ideas and their lives. Make it a priority. Ask, why did God put this person in my life? Most of all, smile. Smiling is catching and it brings a release of endorphins in the other person and lifts your own spirit and tells them, look, whatever you're going through, whatever you're struggling with, I'm just glad to see you. Be thou my vision, O Lord. Thank you.